Welcome back to the reload bench. The rifle is at an odd angle because I'm trying to get the center section of it in frame and the reload bench really is not set up for shooting video of long guns. The reason I need the center section in frame is because of the way this scope is mounted. As some of you may know, I'm not an optic guy. I'm just not. This is the second scope I've ever owned and I thought it would be fairly simple. Just get some rings that it would attach to the Picatinny rail on top of the rifle and put the scope in it. That's about it. Now, I went with a set of tally rings for this loophole scope because I've got tally rings on my loophole scope on my Henry rifle. And I thought, hey, they work good on that. They'll probably work good on this. There were three different heights, low, medium, and high. I got the tallest set of rings and I made sure that they were for the diameter tube of the scope. When I went to mount it, I didn't have any problems. Nothing at all. It was it was fairly straightforward. However, I noticed at the range that the rifle was hitting in the same spot no matter what adjustment I made on the scope. I wasn't sure what was up, but I figured it had something to do with the way I mounted the scope. Once again, I'm not an optics guy. So I took it to a friend who is an optics guy. And the very first thing he pointed out was that he thought that the front of the scope was actually touching the top of the rail here on the handguard for the barrel. So what we did was we simply took a dollar bill, $20 bill, something like that, and slid it in this gap. We couldn't get it in. We could we could get it to start, but it wouldn't make it past the first, the first uh, track here on the rail. So he said, there's your problem. He said, the scope is bound up. He said, you can make all the adjustments you want your your crosshairs aren't going to move no matter what you do he said because this is a loophole scope this is a higher end scope it's well built he says you're more or less just um more or less just kind of uh bumping a little ball bearing in there and it's not moving anything he doesn't think the scope is damaged because it's brand new and loophole makes a very rugged quality product so what we did was we decided to try to put spacers into the scope rings. What ended up happening was that we took a business card and we put in one piece of paper at a time in the bottom of the scope ring, attached it, and then tried to run a piece of paper between the front of the scope and the rifle. That didn't work. No matter what, that didn't work. So I went to a sporting goods store and I bought a set of loophole rings that were slightly taller than the tally rings. We put those on, we tried sliding a bill in the front and once again, it only went so far and wouldn't go any further. So what my friend ended up doing was taking those uh, pieces of, of cardboard from the business card we'd cut up and he put as many of them in there as he could and then tighten it down. And what do you know, we can get a $10 bill in there. As a matter of fact, let's try with a credit card because, you know, I'm all about the credit card. Can we get a credit card in there? We can. So the scope is no longer binding up. And if I take it to the range, I should be able to adjust the crosshairs and get this scope sighted in. Now, that's just fine. That'll work just fine. It was an inexpensive repair. I mean, it wasn't uh, it wasn't completely inexpensive because the loophole rings were about a hundred bucks. But loophole makes good quality stuff. I've got a loophole scope. I've got loophole rings. Hey, now I've got an extra set of tally rings that I'm going to have to put on something at some point. Those of you out there have been doing this for a while. You know what I'm talking about. You got your box of extra parts, and eventually you're like, oh man, I, I really need this, and I've I've got it for uh, a later. Later project, I'm sure, but for right now, I'm going to leave these loophole uh, rings on here, but I'm not going to leave the cardboard inserts in there, even though that should do the job. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a riser, and that's what we're going to look at next. So what I've got here is a white cardboard rectangular box from Yankee Hill Machine. I've removed the uh, shipping label. I already started cutting the tape on it. Let me cut the rest of the tape. It's sealed up really good. It arrived. U.S. mail was waiting for me in my mailbox. All right, so what's in the box? Well, what I primarily placed the order for 
was for this riser that should go on the top of the 450 Bushmaster AR upper and raise those scope rings up enough that the optic does not bind up against the rail over uh, that's that's built into the handguard. So that's primarily what I've got here. It's just a uh, bag with uh, with a cardboard insert in the back. Let's go ahead and cut it open. It's not reclosable or anything. So I can slide this out. So it's a half inch riser and it should be long enough to attach both scope rings to and not interfere with anything. Additionally, I got this mini riser. This is a half inch, I believe. Yes, half inch mini riser. And the reason I got that is I already had one. I already had one uh, from a previous project. Just had the one. Uh, I was going to use it on a uh, front sight and ended up uh, not needing it. So it's in with my spare parts. And I thought, you know what? I'm already paying shipping. I might as well go ahead and order one of these and keep it. Now I've got two. In the event I run into this problem again, I probably could just put the mini riser underneath each scope ring in place of this rail. But let's see how well this fits onto the rifle. Off camera, I took a T15 Torx screwdriver and I loosened the two screws that hold these loophole rings onto the Picatinny rail. I simply just loosened them up enough that the clamp on the one side was loose and I could wiggle this off the rifle, but still leave it attached to the scope. In order to put on the Yankee Hill machine riser, I broke the rifle down shotgun style, meaning I popped out the rear pin and I pivoted the upper receiver on the front pin away from the lower receiver. I removed the bolt carrier group and the charging handle, just simply slid those out, and I slid the Yankee Hill machine riser onto the Picatinny rail. I tightened it up with a uh, or I removed the screws first, I should say, and then once I had it aligned with different cutouts here in the rail, I simply just put in the back screw, I got it hand tight, and then I put in the front screw, tighten that down all the way, I used a 1 8 inch hex key, then I simply just put the loophole scope in about the same position it was on the Picatinny rail, on top of the riser, just lined up the clamps, tightened it up with the T15 screwdriver. And now it sets up a lot higher. I can get my finger in underneath there. So even though this is setting up a lot higher than what it was before, there is an adjustable cheek rest on this double star hammer buttstock. So I've raised that up and it should be in alignment, but I can make some adjustments at the range with the cheek rest if I need to. So I'll make sure I bring Allen wrenches for that. And I should be able to sight this in. Hopefully there's no damage done to this loophole optic. If there is, I'll deal with that at a later point. But for now, I think I've finally got my AR-15 in 450 Bushmaster in a position to sight it in for late antlerless season here in Michigan. I'll include a link in the description section below to Yankee Hill Machine and to loophole for the scope, the rings, and the riser. I'll also include a link to Double Star for the hammer buttstock. Thanks for watching.